feature action underway on night two of the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Side by side into one and two racing for the lead. Rico Abreu up top. David Crowell down low. Abreu leads at the end of the back straight away. Rico Abreu leading the first lap. Three wide for fourth. Corey Day, Giovanni Selzy, and Donnie Schultz out of turn four. Giovanni Selzy. Oh, trouble upside down between one and two. Looks like Trey Starks electing to remain in the cockpit of the car. Perhaps thoughts of getting that machine to the Federated Car Care work zone. Looks to be some pretty significant damage on the back side of that machine. Rico Abreu on the throttle. We are back to green flag action on night two of the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. David Gravel down to the bottom of the speedway in one and two. Rico got way up close to the wall. Abreu maintains the lead down the back stretch. David Gravel second. Sheldon Hodgenshield third. Corey Day now working well on the bottom of the speedway. Day now will be fourth when they cross the line with Giovanni Selzy in fifth. Selzy's got his hands full, his brother Dominic to the inside and now working to the outside, the 49 of Brad Sweet. Three car battle for seven through turns three and four. Oh, nearly contact there out of turn four. Dominic Selzy to the inside of Gio and now Brad Sweet's gonna try to split them. Gio turns it back underneath the big cat out of turn two. Sweet, Selzy, Selzy. Not necessarily in that order as they cross the start finish line. Brad Sweet slides up in front of Giovanni Selzy. Gio crosses back underneath him. Donnie shots again to the bottom of the speedway. We'll pull even with Corey Day. Will not make the pass. Both Day and shots getting closer to the 17 of Sheldon Hodenshield. Shots now by Corey Day. Donnie shots up to fourth and looking for third. Sheldon Hodenshield down low to block. And Hodenshield now catching up with second place David Gravel. Sheldon to the inside, slide job out of turn four. Sheldon Hodenshield second, here's Gravel looking to the inside. Can't make it happen in turn number one. Donnie Schatz now down low, coming after Gravel. Corey Day around the outside of Donnie Schatz. Three car battle for third into turns three and four. Schatz down low, Day in the middle, David Gravel up high. They'll race that way into turns one and two. Corey Day now reeling in last night's feature winner. Corey Day all over the back of the NOS Energy Drink 17 to the inside. Slower car, Luke Didiak right in front of him prevents him from making the pass for second. Less than five laps remaining for Abreu. Day inching closer to the NOS Energy Drink 17 and Donnie Schatz gets by David Gravel to move to fourth. Gravel trying to come back at him with a high side out of quarter number two. Schatz has the position at the end of the back straightaway. Gravel to the inside in three and four. Tawny Schatz maintains fourth as they cross the line. White flag set to wave for Rico Abreu. Corey Day right behind Sheldon Hodden showed on the final lap. Abreu into the cushion. Oh, that was close between one and two. Final time down the back straightaway. Checkered flag will wave for the fifth time this season with the World of Outlaws for Rico Abreu. Sheldon Hodden showed second, Corey Day third, Donny Schatz fourth, and David Gravel in fifth. Enrico Abreu up top, full wing dance to celebrate the win on night two of the Sage Fruits Gadget Nationals. Hats off to my amazing team. Uh, you know, their critical thinking is unbelievable, and they just execute uh, when the time matters. So it's, uh, that's tough racing. You're racing with the best cars in the country, and we got a, a, a great group of people behind us to get our car up front, and it's just an amazing racetrack. Kevin Rudine and everybody have done an unbelievable job here. I know Peter Murphy and, uh, you know, Chuck with Sage does a great for this event. So I, I just, I made sure to mark it down on our calendar to be here and be a part of this. So I just, I really love racing on the West Coast. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I, I really tried to judge my, my pace and traffic. And, um, you know, I just noticed is the more I spun my tires, the more the lap cars drove away from me. And I just, uh, you know, the, the top would get dirty as guys were running down there. So I ran down a, a few laps just to see if I could maintain pace. And then, uh, you know, once guys started really slowing down at the end, I could really move up and, and make some scene. I, I started cheating it in one and two, and you, you, you judge your pace off lap traffic and then try to listen behind you. And, um, you know, I knew if the 17 or the two was probably running it just as hard as I was and I wasn't passing lap cars, uh, you just have to process uh, things while you're racing there. So, uh, you know, as, as, I, as I just kept my tires underneath me and kept everything cooled down, my car just kept getting better and better. I think the lane choice there was just a little bit of an advantage and then being able to time the start uh, and squeeze the two car down uh, just to 
get them freed up a little bit uh, where I could make a monster run into turn one. So, um, you know, just like I said, Ricky Warner, Zach, Brady, you know, they, they just, uh, they work really good together. And it's a, it's a really cool time for me to be a part of such a unbelievable team that believes in me and our partners, um, you know, the Lucas Soil guys, uh, you know, Marty and Missy Mello, uh, the Hunt family, El Bandito Tequila, you know, came on board this year and, and you know, they just keep pushing us to be better and better. For live coverage of every World of Outlaws event and for extended on-demand race content, visit DirtVision.com. For full race results, features, and series news, visit WorldOfOutlaws.com.